Hello everybody, welcome back to the Waterstones vlog. Uh, it's me, Will. Um, I recorded my first video uh, amongst the classics on the first floor of Waterstones in Piccadilly. Um, and it was frankly a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> Slightly conscious of the fact that people were trying to get the shop ready to open. Um, and it's way too busy out there now for me to go in there. So I have taken refuge in one of the subterranean meeting rooms here at Piccadilly. I, I may spruce the place up a bit, but there's a very lovely poster of uh, Catcher in the Rye there. There's a picture of Brett Easton Ellis up there. Um, so I apologise if it's slightly echoey, but it doesn't matter, we're here to talk about good stuff. And this week, I want to talk to you about short stories. Um, these are often a slightly maligned form of, of fiction. They don't get the attention that uh, the big novels get. But I want to talk about three short story collections, which I think are really, really worth your time. And that's because they all demonstrate some of the things that short stories can do that novels can't. Um, they can often, I think, short stories do that thing where they show a sort of concentrated burst of real creativity. Um, or they can do something to your brain that makes you think about them long after you finish them. Um, and also they can sometimes provide you with that sort of concentrated burst of entertainment that you might need on a short commute somewhere or in your lunch break so that you can read something from start to finish which is just a joy. And all three of these books demonstrate those various qualities. So, to start off with, this is A Trib and Other Stories by Ellie Williams, which is published by Influx Press, which is a, a small independent press. And this is, I read this a while ago and I keep thinking about it because if you like to read writers whose writing is the thing that makes you go, oh my God, how do you do that? I would really recommend reading Ellie Williams. These stories are in many ways about language and about writing, uh, and about often focusing on very specific moments in, in somebody's life. Um, kind of very mundane, ordinary moments, but very specific and, and important for various reasons. Um, there's a great story right at the beginning, um, which is all about somebody who's suffering from aphasia. Um, and so language is absolutely the key thing in this story and, and it, the sort of the breakdown of the brain's communication about language and, and as you're reading the story the sort of the text starts to, to break down uh, the story is called the alphabet um, and it's one of those things which in the wrong hands would feel like a sort of technical writing exercise but in Ellie Williams hands is absolutely fantastic and there's loads of stories like that in here um, she's so skillful at playing with with the language that she uses you can tell she's taken an awful lot of care over the construction of these stories um, and so they're kind of it's got this sort of linguistics fun that that feels a little bit like a sort of workout for you as a reader and I mean that in a really good way I mean that as you're reading you're thinking oh god that's so clever how you've done that um, and so I don't want to sort of go into too much detail about any of these collections really but if, as I said if you are looking for the kind of short stories which make a virtue of their writing and show you how the sort of language or the way of communicating or indeed the way that you have of reading a book that you take for granted it sort of pulls the rug from underneath your feet and, and does something really interesting and so it, I found each of these stories really invigorating to read so there you go that is A Trib and Other Stories by Ellie Williams now we move on to Darker With The Lights On by David Hayden, which is published by Little Island Press, another independent press. I'm going to start off by saying, you can see it's got this fantastic sort of austere design. Beautiful, beautifully made book. Um, hardback boards, beautiful coloured end papers. The actual paper <laughs> that the, the stories are printed on is incredible quality. The setting uh, is incredible too. So it's one of those books that is a pleasure to hold and a pleasure to read because of it as an object, which I think is, is worth a star all on its own. Um, that's before we get to the, the stories themselves. Um, David Hayden has been writing uh, for many years and this is sort of collecting together um, some of his stories. I suppose as a declaration of interest, I know David, um, and I'm not recommending this book because I know him, I'm recommending it because it's absolutely fantastic. He has recommended to me incredible books to read over the years. He's one of the best recommenders <laughs> that you could ever hope to meet. But of course, through all of that reading that he's done himself, he has, of course, learned how to write. And in here, we have an amazing collection of stories. There's 20 stories in here, and they are full of images and ideas that will haunt you after you have finished reading them. Um, they are very modernist in style, and in reviews, you will see people like Samuel Beckett being mentioned and things like that. 
It is the kind of uh, atmosphere which is a bit like being stuck in limbo or in purgatory or something. These stories often feel as if they're happening uh, in, in a non-specific place um, with non-specific people, but they are filled with extraordinary ideas. There is one story where somebody is effectively leaping off a building to their death, but they never hit the ground, and the story sort of is filled with what he is thinking as he travels through the air. There is a hilarious story in here in which, and you'll have to bear with me, in which a squirrel uh, does a sort of literature class um, and describes the, the, it's called How to Read a Picture Book, and, and it sort of describes the various, <laughs> well, it's, it's sort of filled with ideas for writing, basically. Um, uh, but it's incredibly funny and surreal because it is a cigar-chomping squirrel who is, to, who is delivering this lecture. Um, so there's some very weird things like that. There's a, another story where somebody is sort of effectively auctioning the items of, of his life, sort of filled with symbolism, rich with meaning, and the kind of book that I have been wanting to sort of read one story at a time and then go away and let that sort of settle and, and let me think about it before I'm ready to go back and read another one. Um, so it's been sitting very comfortably on my bedside and it's been a pleasure to dip into it. Um, so as I said, a pleasure to hold, a pleasure to read and filled with very, very profound meaning. That is Darker With The Lights On by David Hayden. And finally, we have a book here called Uncommon Type, some stories by some chap called Tom Hanks who, uh, yeah, you may have heard of. It's, it's that Tom Hanks. Now, of course, Tom Hanks doesn't need me to sit here and uh, help him with publicising his book, I'm sure, because you will all have heard of it by the time this video goes out, and if you haven't, you, you will do. But here I am talking about short stories as a maligned form, and of course a lot of people will be like, oh, I bet Tom Hanks doesn't struggle with his short stories. But of course, there'll be a lot of scrutiny on these stories. He is Tom Hanks, but can he write? Now, what I do know before opening this book is that he definitely reads. Uh, he was one of the people who got behind the book uh, Stoner by John Williams, for example. He was a big fan of that book. And I've seen a few interviews with him where he mentions things that he's reading. He is clearly a very passionate reader. Another thing that he is is a passionate collector of typewriters. And that's why you'll see a typewriter here. There are some amazing pictures of typewriters throughout the book. And all of the stories feature a typewriter in some way. Uh, sometimes it's integral to the story, sometimes it's sort of on the side somewhere. Um, and what we have here is a collection of stories which I have realised after finishing are very much like watching Tom Hanks films. And what I mean by that is that they are really well done, they are very, very entertaining. Some of them are sort of very serious and, and, and profound, and others are much more sort of lightweight and, and, and entertaining. But they're all great. And so there are a lot of people, I'm sure, who will be sort of like, oh, great, he can write stories as well. <laughs> but this is somebody, as I said, who clearly enjoys reading stories and uh, has taken that love for reading and, and, and sort of transferred it to another skill, which is his own writing. So really a great joy to read and the sort of the, the typewriter connection is, is kind of fun. Um, but he's just great with character, of course, fantastic with dialogue, as you might expect. There is one story which is very much set within the world of film, uh, which is very, very funny because of the insights that he, of course, has about what it must be like following a famous movie star around the world publicising a film. Um, but they're just, as I said, gr brilliantly observed characters and dialogue that he makes look sort of effortless, but I know isn't. Um, it requires a lot of work to make dialogue seem like normal dialogue, but also entertaining. And that's the main thing. I was so entertained by these stories. Funny, and what you're, you're very happy to read on uh, and get to another one because they are great, great entertainment. So there you go. That is Uncommon Type by Tom Hanks. Now, I mentioned uh, on Twitter that if we reached 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, I would do a giveaway. We did reach 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. Well done. So we're going to do a giveaway. And it's going to be a rather special giveaway because uh, <laughs> Tom Hanks is coming over to the UK uh, and doing a couple of very, very exclusive events. Uh, these, of course, have sold out. Um, there are some signed copies of his books. These, of course, have sold out too. However, we've made a deal. And what I can offer as a prize for somebody here is a personally dedicated 
copy of Uncommon Type by Tom Hanks, uh, signed by Tom Hanks. So I will pick a winner, and that name will be passed on, and then he will dedicate the book to you, uh, and we will post it out to you. That's pretty good, right? That's pretty exciting. What do you have to do to win this amazing prize? Well, you have to be subscribed to this channel. That is the first thing. So if you haven't pressed that button already, press that button now. There's probably one there, there's probably one popping up here. There'll be, just find the subscribe button and make sure you press it. I want you to subscribe because I want you to come back. I want you to keep watching this vlog and getting great book recommendations. And also there's loads of other stuff that's gonna be appearing on this channel. Fantastic interviews, all sorts of stuff. And what you need to do is you need to leave a comment below. Now, we could get really clever with this and we could sort of say that because there's this typewriter connection, maybe you should type on your keyboard in the comments section telling me why you think you deserve this signed copy of Uncommon Type. Don't have to write a massive essay. Just keep it short and pithy like a short story and tell me why you deserve that copy. I will go through the comments uh, and I will pick a winner before uh, he comes over to do the signing. Uh, it will probably be within the next couple of weeks. I might be more specific with the date once I've worked out what the hell I'm doing. But anyway, for now, subscribe, leave a comment below, and I will pick winners. Uh, a one, one winner. Let's be very clear, there will be one winner. Um, so there we go. I think that's pretty exciting. Come uh, back next week uh, and you will hear Sean talking about her next choice. But most importantly, keep reading, keep coming back here, subscribe, and join the bookish chat. See you soon.